when the Asiatics and the, the Asiatics and the Greeks and then the, later the Romans started invading Africa from the north, then the Africans moved down south. So those that could remember the political systems of organizing empires, they built these kingdoms that you see afterwards. In this part of East Africa, the most powerful kingdom was the Bunyoro kingdom. It was a province which belonged to the empire of Kitara. The legendary Chitara Empire. Obukama, Obutaziri, Obugaziri. Chitara ya hikiago mutano guayu. Mbichweka biya, Kongo. Trading up to Isangani. Yakunu Kizago Mate and Boko, Kikira Kimai Gondokor. Mbichweka biya, Kenya. Kana Masim Kifuku no Hikira Kimu Vojinu Karago Tazadi. It means that Bunyoro covered a vast territory. The height of its power was 1600. One ideology that made it win over people was the ideology of being a gentleman. To the Banyoro, a Munyoro is a gentleman and a Munyoro Kati is a lady. Of course, you wouldn't be a Munyoro or a Munyoro Kati if you're poor, you're lazy, you're not presentable. You had to basically work hard. They were Tembuzi, the Habingas, and that was about the Bronze Age. Baba Tembuzi were more of Madi origin. The Madi Indri, you know Indri is goat, eh? And they had ruled this territory from South Sudan up to Northern Tanzania. The Bachwezi who ruled for a shorter duration came from Batembuzi. The story we hear that they were demigods. Is this belief they were super people? That they came from heaven, that they disappeared also to the underworld. The Bachwezi were the ancient Egyptians. The Vito were Bachwezi. With the advent of the Vito dynasty, the Bachwezi dynasty vanished.